Today, I'll show you step-by-step step how you can paint this dog in watercolor and how you can mix colors to create all kinds of grays and blacks. The painting is created on Osh, 140-pound cold press paper using Windsor & Newton paints, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a bit of Windsor lemon in the eyes. First, some tips and some truths. When you anticipate these truths, you can move forward with confidence. It will take multiple layers of color to build deep, rich blacks. Be patient. Take breaks as you progress through the painting. There will be uncomfortable, ugly stages. Persevere. Keep moving forward and trust the process. I encourage you to use your favorite gray or black. I like to use a mix of French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. This gives you the freedom to make the color a little more brownish, a little more bluish. And these colors are forgiving. They're easy to lift. You can soften. Yet, as you apply multiple layers, the colors will stay in place when you use a gentle touch. And you can adjust the amount of blue or brown in your mix based on what you're seeing in your painting. First, I like to create the eyes, the nose, and sometimes the mouth. This establishes the personality or the character of the subject. And now for the black parts. Begin with the underpainting. What is the lightest color that you can see underneath or through the darker values? In this dog, I'm looking underneath the black fur and I'm seeing tan or a very pale brown. I'm also seeing white and sometimes gray. We'll establish these colors first. For now, the white will remain the white of the paper. You can lay in the color wet in wet or wet on dry. I prefer to go in wet on dry to control exactly where the color goes. This underpainting is based on the lightest colors that you can see. It might be one color or it might be more than one. Next, We'll move into the beginnings of the colors. If you just don't know where to start, it's helpful to create a pale map of shapes of color. This will help you to keep your place and avoid becoming confused. I find this especially helpful painting subjects that contain a lot of black. It helps me to keep track of where I am. These are the edges of larger shapes that I see in the photo. We're thinking about how we're going to eventually transition from black fur into the white fur. I'm laying in an edge of pale gray fur around those white shapes. And here's another technique if you're not sure what to do. Lay in a pale map of fur. I'm using that pale gray mix. Use the consistency of tea to milk. Keep it pale because we will go darker. Give attention to the length and the curving of the fur. The curving of the fur helps to establish the beginnings of contour and bone structure. Use your favorite brush. I go back and forth between small and medium-sized pointed round brushes to get the fur in more quickly. I like to use a comber brush or a filbert grainer. Pick up just a little bit of color on the brush and use the tip of the brush to create thin, fine hairs. By the end of this step, you'll have a pale map of fur in place and you'll see the beginnings of contour and curve. It will be too pale and it will be sloppy. And that's okay, it's part of the process. Next, We'll begin to take the subject darker, and this is going to appear unbalanced, rough, and sloppy. We're going to lay in where the darkest shapes will be. It's not going to be the darkest yet, but it will help you keep track of where those darkest parts are. Use a thin consistency, something like milk. By the end of this step, you'll clearly see where the darkest parts are. It won't be dark enough. It will be sloppy and unbalanced and uncomfortable. Trust the process. When those darkest parts are completely dry, move into the mid-tones. 
colors that are in between the darkest and lightest. If you'd like to see more fur, apply another layer of fur. If you'd like a smoother subject, apply thin layers of color. Think about the transitions from dark to not so dark and the transitions from what will be black into white. By the end of this step, the subject will be darker and things will appear more unified. If you feel like things are appearing a little rough and if you'd like to go a little darker, apply thin layers of gray. Use a gentle touch, barely touching the brush to the paper, and you can take this dog just a little darker and it will unify the fur. And you can use any brush to do this. You'll probably find that the darkest parts need to go even darker. So let's do that next. This time, to create a darker value, I'll use that same gray mix, but a slightly thicker consistency. This is like milk to thin cream. If the color's too bluish, use a little more brown in the mix. If it appears too brownish, use a little more blue. Think about the edges of the color and how the color transitions into lighter grays and blacks, and also how you transition from black to white. By the end of this step, it will be unbalanced. Keep moving forward. And we'll revisit the midtones again. Ask yourself what needs to go a little darker. Apply fur or layers of color. Think about creating smooth transitions from dark to light, from color to color. Think about contour and bone structure. I've learned that darker values create the impression of inward curve. Lighter values seem to come towards us, so we can manipulate values to create the impression of curving and bone structure. If you feel like anything appears too rough, at any time you can smooth with thin layers of color or water. Take breaks. Stop looking at the painting for a while. And repeat this process as often as needed. Revisit the darkest parts, then the midtones. Give attention to the lightest areas because they'll begin to appear too pale. Allow each layer to dry before applying the next color. When you get to the point where you feel like your subject is just about finished, move into final refinements. Revisit the darkest parts, the midtones, the lightest values. Would you like to refine color? Use a gentle touch. Adjust the consistency and the color based on what you're seeing in your painting. Revisit the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, making final refinements. And create whiskers. I use either very pale gray or a white product such as Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White or White Gouache. And when you're happy with your painting, it's finished. In summary, create the eyes and the nose. Establish the lightest colors underneath the darker grays and blacks. Lay in a pale gray map of larger shapes than the first layer of fur. What will be the darkest parts? The midtones, and often another layer of fur. Reinforce the darkest parts again, followed by midtones, creating fur or thin layers of color. And repeat those steps darkest parts, midtones, lightest areas. Take your time. Take lots of breaks, have fun, and trust the process. If you'd like to see this tutorial in real time, I invite you to visit our watercolor school where you can learn to paint this dog and many other kinds of animals and people. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.